Greetings. It's Christmas Eve here at Foundation After Midnight. Well, not the calendar Christmas Eve, but the real Christmas Eve. You know, the one from before the, uh, incident? Yeah. It seems that we've all been affected with cheer and the anomalous effect of Mr. Kringle, because the amount of work getting done is non-existent. I gave Andrew the holiday off, so it's just me here today in the studio. Me, you listeners, and a hot cup of cocoa. <sighs> Festive. Most experiments, expeditions, research, and non-containment procedure tasks have been put on hold for the next few days. Partly, this is to give the personnel time to relax and enjoy the holiday with family and friends. This partly might also be because the higher-ups would feel really bad if they indirectly allowed someone to get horrifically killed at Christmas time. Tis the season. Ah, the, you know, tis the season for holiday cheer. Not getting killed. <laughs> Never in season. Anyway, since I know you're out there, I'll be taking calls on the radio hotline and broadcasting them to spread the holiday cheer throughout the Global Foundation organization. Speaking of which, I have one already waiting, so let's hear who it is. Attention researchers, this is Dr. Jack Bright calling to remind you all to have a very happy holiday no matter what you may practice. And for those who believe in the war on Christmas, I'm stocking up on shotguns. Night. And good night to you, and thank you, Dr. Bright. I'm sure no one is going to mess with you and your shotgun-filled Christmas. See, this is Christmas for the Beta 5 Babysitters. This is Agent Foggy looking to send some Christmas cheer at some folks. Like Dr. Harlow on the medical staff. Doing a research for his Ty and Zuza. May make senior someday. Also, shout out to Agent Candy, wherever you may be. And to Corey King out in the research development team. And also to you, Skipper. If you keep giving, bringing us the tunes, we'll keep bringing you D-Class. Stay safe out there, everybody. <laughs> hey, Foggy. Thanks for the shout-outs, and don't worry. We've got plenty of broadcasts for you tonight, like this next message. Hello, this is Special Agent Hoffman calling in from Biosite 66 to say happy holidays. Things are going well, and... Oh, God. I think someone spiked the eggnog with fluids from 1933. Oh. Yep. Dr. Rich is all over the floor now. I gotta go. <laughs> oh, Biosite 66. Good times. Good times. I hope Dr. Rich is alright, though. SCP-1933 is volatile. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he's, um... How to put it? Um, okay. We had a saying in Biosite 66. If a fat man in a suit tries to offer you a drink. No, no. Um, he has a lot of alcohol in him. It, no, it, he, he's... Mm, it's hard to... If you're given a drink that has Irish cream and you kind of want to check... Uh, if it's, like, entirely Irish cream... No. Ah. Okay, let me just play you guys the report for what we're talking about. This is a Holiday PSA 572. Beginning transmission. Item number SCP-1933. Object class safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-1933 is to be kept in a standard low security cell equipped with basic furnishings. It is to be provided with 2 liters of Irish whiskey, 500 milliliters of double cream, no less than 48% fat content, 25 grams of powdered sugar, and 20 milliliters of refined vegetable oil on a daily basis. As SCP-1933 is unwilling to engage in basic hygiene, it is to be forcibly stripped and showered by level 3 personnel on a weekly basis, and its beard shaved and nails clipped on a monthly basis. 
Its soiled clothing is to be considered highly flammable and is to be incinerated as a fire hazard. Description SCP-1933 is an obese middle-aged Caucasian male in a constant state of moderate to severe alcohol intoxication. SCP-1933's bodily fluids, including both intracellular and extracellular fluids, consist entirely of a substance identical in composition to the alcoholic beverage known as Irish cream. This substance adequately fulfills the functions of the fluids it replaces in SCP-1933's tissues. Despite the fact that it renders normal biochemical processes essentially to life impossible, Foundation scientists have been unable to determine how it managed this. SCP-1933 subsists on a diet of cream, Irish whiskey, sugar, and refined vegetable oil, the basic ingredients of most commercially produced varieties of Irish cream. It prefers to supplement its diet with small amounts of various herbs and flavorings, usually coffee, but these are not essential to its survival. It is incapable of digesting anything that is not the standard ingredient of Irish cream, including Irish cream which has been prepared beforehand. SCP-1933 will display effects consistent of acute malnutrition if its blood alcohol content significantly falls below an or exceeds the range of 15 to 20 percent, the typical ABV of Irish cream. SCP-1933's bodily fluids are safe from human cons for human consumption if intake is limited to 25 milliliters or less within 24 hours. If the subject exceeds this limit, there is a significant risk that all their bodily fluids will be transformed into Irish cream. This substance does not fulfill the functions of the fluids it replaces, as it does for SCP-1933. As such, it is instantly fatal. The probability that a subject's bodily fluids will be transformed into Irish cream increases by approximately 5% for each additional milliliter of SCP-1933's bodily fluids consumed. It is not known if the bodily fluids of SCP-1933's victims would have the same anomalous effects as SCP-1933's bodily fluids if they were to be consumed. Prior to containment, SCP-1933 was chronically homeless, sleeping either on the street or in derelict buildings, wearing a Santa Claus suit at all times, stealing money with which to purchase the specific items of food and drink necessary for its survival, and collecting its bodily fluids in bottles. It would attempt to break into people's homes between 2300 hours on December 24th, Christmas Eve, and 5 o'clock December 25th, Christmas Day, and place crudely wrapped bottles of its bodily fluids alongside other wrapped presents, with the intention that they would later be unwrapped and subsequently consumed. SCP-1933 claims that this activity was motivated by a benevolent desire to give people presents, and refuses to acknowledge that its bodily fluids are fatal if consumed in large quantities. It has not been determined whether it is genuinely unaware and unwilling to accept that this is the case, or whether it is trying to conceal malicious intentions. However, the general consensus amongst Foundation staff who have studied SCP-1933 is that the former is more likely. In fact, during Christmas Eve, he tried to breach containment so that he could give gifts to people around the site, but it was easy to contain. Okay, now that that's out of the way, a little holiday theatrics is playing at a site near you. Taken from the trash and put on the stage comes a classic Christmas tale with a foundation twist. Site 19's A Christmas Carol is being put on this year with your favorite personnel, and you do not want to miss it. Uh, also, it's um, I've been told to remind everyone that Site 19 Inc. is designated for foundation work only. Before Andrew left, he left a bit of a PSA for all of you, and here we have it. Hello, this is Assistant DJ Andrew. I'm not at the station right now, but I thought I'd still do a little holiday PSA. 
A reminder that the Foundation has a zero-tolerance policy on alcohol for all active skeleton crews during the holiday season. Security teams will find any flasks or other containers stashed on your person, no matter how well you thought they were hidden. Well, Andrew, we hope you're having a happy holiday, and I don't remember giving you a, a promotion. So that's new. An important security note to all Foundation personnel. Uh, I quote, Yesterday, containment for several SCP artifacts, including 1252, a half-formed imaginary friend, 1551, the repeating house, and 747, a group of animal mask-wearing children, was breached. In all instances where the SCP object has been capable of speech, the effector of the breach was described as a kind man. While the breaches were not in and of themselves severe, the fact that an individual apparently acting alone has proven capable of bypassing all security measures and has chosen to do so on a day as significant as yesterday should be troubling to all Foundation employees. To be clear, as there has been no indication of negligence on the part of Foundation employees, no one is being punished for this incident. This is only a reminder that, despite however human SCP objects may appear, we are still interacting with entities far beyond our ability to comprehend. It should go without saying that all Foundation personnel on all levels must maintain absolute vigilance at all times. Signed, O5 dash. End quote. Well, even during this festive season, it is important to keep on your toes, people. Got to stay sharp, because we deal with some pretty crazy things on a daily basis. <laughs> Take, for example, the Are We Cool Yet? group of interest. This GOI is. I'll get the official right up here. Quote A collective of art terrorists. The members of Are We Cool Yet? are capable of either obtaining or producing anomalous objects and entities and using them to create art installations. These installations are placed for maximum public exposure and are often, but not always, fatal to bystanders. The phrase, are we cool yet, is always present in some way. They are anarchists, if you will. To emphasize this, I'll read a little fictional Christmas-themed story. I still think this is a terrible idea. No, it's awesome. Like deconstructive or whatever. Overgang and Joey stared at the enormous red bubble that towered over nearby buildings, pensively sipping eggnog. It had several hundred minuscule trees hanging off the side of it. Overgang posed a question. So, it's an hour and ten to midnight. What happens when it's Christmas? Presents happen. Presents happen? Presents happen. Everywhere. Elaborate. It literally causes Christmas miracles. Elaborate more. Sick children will walk. Tiny Tim will get his presents. Scrooge will see the light. The town will be filled with cheer and goodwill. Children will run downstairs only to see Santa Claus pop up the chimney. Rich people will let beggars into their homes, and every church bell will ring twelve times. A cranky old man will smile for the first time in twenty years. Kids will ice skate while laughing happily and be joined by their otherwise dismissive parents. Snow shall fall down, leaving beautiful white fields by morning. John McLean and Hans Gruber will fight a war of wills. Little Macaulay Culkin will fight off a pair of thieves. The Grinch's heart will grow three sizes, and Charlie Brown's sad little Christmas tree will get the love it deserves. Peace on earth, goodwill to men, the perfect Christmas. Well, that sounds lovely. If a bit boring. And of course, since Christmas is all about the little 
little baby Jesus and the mother Mary. Every virginal female in the city will spontaneously give birth. Whereupon the newborn is promptly crushed by a pile of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, that's more like it. <sighs> hmm. Well, I think it's a good time to listen to some more hotline calls. Remember, the FAM radio hotline is open all year round. So give us a call. The number to call is 512-937-2346. That's again, 512-937-2346. So, here's next. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Hall Charlton. Uh, if you're at my site, uh, you know who you are. I'd just like to tell you, eggnog, candy canes, Christmas cookies at my office. Plenty for everybody. I hope everybody has a very safe, very happy holiday season. Stay warm, stay happy. Just, it's the most wonderful time of the year. You gotta make the best of it. You really do. Uh, that's about it. Everybody have a great day or night, wherever you are. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. Hopefully, everyone is making the best out of their nights. Whether you're at home with your family, out huddled around a heater, eating Christmas cookies, or trapped in your office with a mountain of paperwork, here's to you, personnel. And here's to our next message. Ah, the elves, the elves, they're all going to go down. Ah, 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 oh, my God. Ah. Oh, that was a tad concerning. At least, uh, oh, no, uh, they're calling back. Hold on. Let's uh, let's try that again. Hello. Um, please ignore the previous message. Um, Site twenty three is not actually infested and overrun by three foot tall uh, creatures wearing uh, green clothes that are um, taking over the facilities to convert them into a workshop to make beautiful toys for all the good little boys and girls this year. Um, yes, please. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, call off the uh, scary guys in the white suits with the uh, big guns and um, maybe turn off this uh, thingy that's saying 30 seconds until nuclear detonation. That would be really great. Um, yeah, this is uh, Researcher Twinkle Toes just letting you know that the containment breach is uh, contained now. And um, Merry Christmas. Well, thank you very much, Researcher Twinkle Toes. That sounds like a lovely use of one of the research facilities, and I don't see why anyone would be uh, calling security or doing anything about what we've just heard. If I may bring to your collected attentions now, the 14th Annual Site 19 Senior Staff Christmas Eve Caroling Event hosted by Researcher Cornwell is coming to town again. A group which consists of many recognizable faces, including yours truly, will be singing classics like We Wish You a Merry Safe Miss, I Saw Mommy Kissing SCP-076, Navarro Saves Christmas, SCP-682 Roasting on an Open Fire, Set Up Thine Altar Here, No One Should Be Alone, Oh Holy Bright... I hope that I get old before I die. Walking in a winter wintertainment land, the North Pole, SCP-1440, is coming to town. And of course, the main theme to Die Hard. Researcher Conwell would also like to note that due to the events that transpired during last year's caroling, we'll be no longer visiting the Keter Wing. They admit it isn't optimal, but, quote, we're supposed to be spreading Christmas cheer. Not Christmas tears. End quote. To whet your appetite and give you a taste of our performance, here's a personal favorite of mine that didn't make the list this year. <clears throat> the 12 Days of SCP. Now, uh, I imagine we don't want to be here all night, so I'll just jump to day 12. <clears throat> On the 12th day of Christmas, the O5 gave to me 
12 days of headaches, 11 cotter pillars, 10 cleaver prankings, 9 apple seeds, 8 puffer kittens, 7 creepy crawlies, 6 floating iPods, 5 MTFs, 4 lazy cards, 3 new class D's, 2 cups of joe, and another round of Keter Duty. While this isn't new news, uh, but something worthy of the holiday season and of giving thanks and for remembering. <laughs> a, uh, a few years back, after Christmas and New Year's, the Foundation lost one of its finest. Tyler Bailey, inventor of the MUTA, or Multi-Universe Transit Array, died of an aneurysm on January 19th, 1997. His invention allows us to explore alternate realities and is at the height of Foundation studies and research. His sons, Trevor, Tom, and Tristan, are all outstanding members of the Foundation family, and together, they dedicated a plaque at the site in honor of the late Dr. Bailey. Ah, shoot. Sorry, folks, uh, seems like I'm running low on cocoa. While I refill my festive mug of festive fluids for my festive ma, please enjoy Dr. Chimerian reading the classic the Night Before Redacted. Twas the night before Christmas at Site 88, and Robert the guard was running quite late. All the skips were contained in their cells with such care that everyone hoped, as did Bob, they'd stay there. His first order of business was to check on containment. He changed channels instead to the night's entertainment. It's a wonderful life. He'd seen it before and fell asleep then for an hour or more. There were those who had hoped on this night before gifts that Robert would draw the short straw on the shifts, and plans were hatched over seven months previous by a group of some interest with conspirators devious to release all the creatures contained at the site to fight the Foundation on Christmas Eve night. They knew that their plan, while courageous, was dumb, but worth it, they thought, if it releases just one. Gates 1, 2, and 3 were as easy as pie, but they met resistance at Gates 4 and Gates 5. Bob startled awake at the sound of alarms and shouting in death and, of course, firearms. He switched his monitors, checked all the frequencies, hit the red button for containment emergencies on screens he could see as they just made it in. No one could get out, but inside they could win. They'd planned well for that, and taking their chance, the first cell on the right at the placard they'd glanced, and in looking they saw their 173 saw Euclid and thought how bad could it be? The statue Bob knew so easily beaten, but these stupid folk hadn't been to that meeting. So as the last of their number closed his eyes in ascent, Bobby blinked once, and the last one was bent. He panicked then and fell to the floor, scrambled and made his way outside his door. The statue knew that's right where he would be, and Bobby fell backwards, attempting to flee. It pressed on his windpipe, strained vocal cords. This is it, he imagined, and thought of last words. But Merry Christmas, he croaked as it began its attack. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good... Next up... More messages to play for all of you. Yeah, uh, this is Lieutenant Brand from uh, Mobile Task Force uh, Tampa 12. Um, just wondering if you had any, uh, you know, holiday uh, season tips for, I don't know, um, getting elf blood and uh, internal bodily fluids out of Kevlar. Uh, I've been trying everything from... Uh, baking soda and water to, you know, the vinegar to, you know, just sending it to the dry cleaners on site. Of course, I'm not stupid, but um, really it's just not getting out. And, uh, you know, it's kind of leaving an unsightly stain in my Kevlar. And I don't know, it just doesn't really seem very, uh, doesn't really just, it just makes me look unprofessional. And I'd really just like to get that uh, dry cleaned, if you wouldn't mind. Um, anyway, uh Merry Christmas, and, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just go down and, uh, pull a new, uh, set of Kevlar's from, uh, Quartermaster. Oh, uh, I can't say I can really help with that, Braun. Maybe just accept the red coloring as a new part of your uniform. Or maybe a new uniform would make a great gift for Lieutenant Braun, uh, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, uh. Anyone need any last-minute gifts out there? Nope. Anyone? Or, for those of you not with the budget to buy a complete new Mobile Task Force team uniform and outfitted patrol gear, consider this. A two-disc CD set titled Dr. Clef's Holiday Hits 
This amazing album has tons of holiday songs. At least it seems to boast a number. Can't really tell. The cover depicts Dr. Alto Clef in a Santa outfit and holding a microphone. So uh, at least that should be interesting. On a random note, while not a holiday song, it, I'd say it's pretty full of holiday cheer. Please enjoy Research Zen's demo of Do You Want to Catch a Bixby? I, for one, hope to hear more from her in the future. Do you want to catch a Bixby? Come on, we'll go secure it. We never get out anymore. Breach the containment door. It's like we have no lives. We once were normal people, and now we're not. And I think that I know why. Do you want to catch a Bixby? It doesn't have to be a Bixby. Go away, agent. I never mind. Do you want to catch a Bixby? Or God's a 19th hall? I think some skip catching is overdue. Now I try staring through these endless blank white walls. Hang in there, MTF. Sometimes it gets unnerving. All these chambered rooms. Just hearing countdowns tick on. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. Doctor. Please, I know you're in there. People say we're here for good. They say it's science, and I believe it too. I'm still waiting on you. Just let me in. A creed is just three words here. Which one means the most? Secure, contain, or protect? Do you want to catch a big Okay, uh, wait, so, I just noticed the sticky note on my desk, and it's telling me to play an audio log here, and I can't seem to remember what it is, but it's my own handwriting, so I'll trust it. Begin log. This is Dr. Sumerian, and this is document 55-C-13. I'm attempting to recall information relating to, um, SCP... Zero five five. Now I remember that it's uh, shit. Okay, well that's pretty much what we expected. Seems like we can't talk about it and we can't write about it. Though, actually, I wonder if we could sing about it. It's worth a shot. Um, <clears throat> well, it's Christmas. You know statues and lizards in eldritch places Reality shapers and endless staircases But do you recall The most dangerous item of all? SCP-55 is Impossible to describe. What was I gonna say next? Oh, right, 55. All of the other objects are dangerous in their own way. The thing about this one is that. What was I about to say? Shit. Despite foggy memories, I know it's not a sphere. We can remember what it's not, but not a sphere is all we've got. And this you simply must know, if it ever does get out, SCP-55 will... Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, god damn it, in log... That's right! Yes, yes, I can't recall what I was just talking about. Anyways, I think I got some more messages ready to go, so uh, let's hear what we got. Happy holidays from the Gamma Quadrant in year 2571. Well, thank you to the year of 2571. Uh, it's probably going to have to be authenticated and looked into, but for now, happy holidays to you. What's this sticky note about an audio log or something? I'll figure that out in a minute. Next up, we got another message. Hello, FAM Radio. 
field agent Thomas here. Uh, I wanted to say hello to all the listeners from France. And uh, like we say here, Joyeux Noël et bonne année. Hey there, field agent Thomas. Thanks for calling in. Always happy to hear from you guys out in the field. While I'm at it, a special shout out to all of you SCP Foundation branches, including our friends in the Russian branch, our Korean colleagues, the Chinese branch, the Polish branch, Spanish, Thai, and Japanese branches. Happy holidays. Well, uh, now the messages are coming in faster. Oh. <laughs> Hi, this is Security Director Bear, just calling in to wish everybody a happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Merry New Year, Happy Yule. Uh, let's see, what else we got on this list? Festivus, uh, Saturnalia, uh, Dias Natalis Solus Invicti, Yalda, Hogswatch, Decemberween, uh, Bodhi Day. Oh, I didn't see that one before. Um, and, oh, by the way, for the Church of the Broken God worshippers out there, first of all, we know where you are and we're coming for you. But happy Cogbirds Day. Bye. No matter what your beliefs are, what holidays you observe, if you're part of the Foundation, you're part of a family. A family of personnel working hard to keep the world a little brighter, a little safer, a little merrier. A special warm thank you to all of you out there. Merry Christmas from the playground at Site 94. Ah, uh, they didn't leave a name on that one, but I, I think that must have been one of the researchers down there. On to the next message. Let me out of here, please. Please, I want to go back to my family. Bells. Let me go, please. Jingle. <laughs> no. Bells. Please, no bells. Jingle. Oh. I just want to go The home. way. Please, let me go home, please. Oh, what fun I just want to go it home. is to ride. Let me out of here. When a one horse please. open please. sleigh. Oh. I want to go home. Well, my, oh my, wasn't that a strange holiday carol? People can sometimes get a little too into the spirit around here and let the holidays get to their head a bit. I'll just uh, be making a call to get some more party goers down there to um lighten the mood up a little. But uh, before I go, uh, let me just take this time to say... Thank you for listening, and I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Here's to another year within the Foundation. Good night. Be sure to listen to the end to hear one last special holiday greeting for everyone. This has been Foundation After Midnight Radio, Happy Holiday Skipper, written by brothers Kyle Stover and Eric Stover. Eric is otherwise known as Toad King 07 Online. The episodes are produced by Toad King Studios, and the voice you've been listening to has been Kyle Stover as DJ Skip. This episode, we asked for holiday greetings from the SCP community, and we thank all of you who called in. It was amazing to hear from everyone, and it really made this special to put together. You can always submit stories, SCPs to use, audio files, or just leave us a voicemail by calling 512-937-2345 or emailing us at scp93.famradio at gmail.com. While we can't use everything that gets sent to us, we try and fit as much as we can in future episodes. This series is based in the SCP Foundation universe and is thusly released under the Creative Commons 3.0 license. You can share it, edit it, use it. All you have to do is attribute us and credit us with a link wherever you post it. Look for links about SCPs mentioned in Tales Read in this episode in the video description on the FAM Radio Facebook fan page and the production blog. We're hoping to do more cool Foundation stuff in 2016, so please keep watching, listening, and following. Be sure to rate us on iTunes as well, as it helps make us look like we're a real podcast. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays. More Foundation After Midnight coming your way, but first, we have one last message for you, special people you. Hey, uh, this is Quest to uh, Toad King 07 and 
to all the uh, fans of the SCP Foundation out there in the real world. Just wanted to say have a happy non-denominationally specific uh, winter season. And uh, thank you very much for supporting us for all these years. And just best wishes and happy holidays.